Hey, it's Alex with Lover Fighter Writer, and in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how I created a recipe generator using Closers Copy AI copywriting software. So I'm going to uh, do a demo of my recipe generator, but I'm also going to show you exactly how I made it so that if you want to make your own recipe generator, or if you want to make a similar kind of a framework with Closers Copy, you know exactly how. All right, so um, this is uh, basically what the text that I have here in this document is basically what a framework looks like on the inside. Um, so I've got my recipe generator framework right here. So if I click on edit, it's going to show me the text and you can see the text that I have here is the same as the text that I have here. So what I did is I wrote a couple of very simple recipes. I put available ingredients, which have eggs, milk, sugar, flour, canola oil, and salt. And then I wrote suggested recipe pancakes, and then I put recipe steps and I explained the recipe. Then I, I put enjoy. <laughs> and then, then I wrote available ingredients for a ham and cheese omelet, and the suggested recipe is a ham and cheese omelet, and then the recipe steps. And then from there, I so I've got three hashtags in between the two steps, and then I've got three hashtags again, and then I put available ingredients, and then I just highlighted all of this and I right clicked and went to expand, or you can just hit control Q. And what that did is that wrote, um, or sorry, I, I, I put available ingredients and I wrote in the available ingredients. Then I highlighted all of this, and then I went to expand. And what that did is that wrote the suggested recipe of veggie fried rice, and it wrote the method for making that recipe. Then, I put three hashtags again, and I put available ingredients, and I wrote out the ingredients for a peach pie, and then I highlighted all of this from here up and everything above, and I did expand again, and it wrote suggested recipe peach pie, and it wrote the recipe steps for a peach pie. And one cool thing that I want to mention is that um, I took the two recipes, the two initial recipes that it generated for me, this one and this one, and I put them in a Grammarly document here, and I ran the plagiarism check, and they are completely original recipes. These recipes, exactly as they're written here, do not exist anywhere else on the internet. You can see this, this one line of text is the only thing that Grammarly found in another document somewhere on the internet. So that means that the entire body of both of these recipes is completely unique and original. And so at that point, I took all of this, I just highlighted all of this, copied it, and went to new framework right here. And when you go to new framework, it opens up this screen. So I put in the recipe name, the category, the creativity level to start with, the length, approximate length of the output, order number, and description. And then I just put all of that text right in here and then um, then I have three hashtags again, and then I just have available ingredients, input one. And I have the example here, which, uh, which this is how you write an example. You have input one colon, and then you have the input, the sample input right there. And so what this does is, um, so we have available ingredients colon space input one. So when I open this framework, you can see we have available ingredients and then we have this uh, text box. So this is how you set up an input. And so the input, uh, if I let's go back again, open this again. So when you type the input, it gets put in to the, uh, the framework right where the placeholder is. And then, uh, and then Closers Copy runs the uh, the framework the exact same way that it does when you use expand in the document. So that's kind of how building a framework works and how I built this specific one. Um, and I've got another video on that's a little bit more detailed on how to build frameworks, so I'll link that in the description as well. But now that we've got this, let's just test this out. So the way that I started with this is I started off just writing predictable ingredients. So for the example, I did apples, sugar, rolled oats, cinnamon, butter. So what do you think this is going to generate for me? Well, the first time that I did it, it only generated apple crisp. It was, that was the only thing that it could think to make, 
with those ingredients, which is kind of my intent. That was, I, I, I intentionally put the ingredients of apple crisp in there and it returned recipes for apple crisp. But let's see if it comes up with anything different this time just to find out. Um, and so that's kind of how I initially tested it was by putting in uh, ingredients that I, like simple ingredients that would make something predictable. Okay, so we, here we actually have apple pie, then we have apple crumble and apple crisp. So you can make, I guess, all of these things with the ingredients that I listed, or maybe you need a little bit. So sometimes closer's copy does add extra ingredients, but generally it just uses the ingredients that you list. And I should point out that when you're using this framework, um, it's important that you have a comma separated list of ingredients and then you have a period at the end. Because if I don't have this period at the end, then sometimes it'll add ingredients to the list uh, because it doesn't know to stop right there. So just putting the period there is just like a stop symbol for the AI. And so when there's a period at the end, it knows that that's the end of the ingredient list and then that's when it's supposed to start the recipe suggestion. Whereas if you don't have it, see it happened, um, it added right here, it added more ingredients to the end. So putting the period at the end just stops that from happening. Um, but you can also just put in like really random ingredients with this and see what it comes up with. Um, so let's see, I'm gonna say coffee, chocolate, eggs, vanilla, um, probably sounds like I'm thinking of something, but I'm not, I'm just putting random ingredients. I guess sugar, um, cornstarch, um, cinnamon, and uh, bread for some reason. All right, put a period there and we'll hit right for me. And let's just see what this uh, comes up with. So what it's gonna do is it's just gonna read the ingredients that I put and it's going to think and basically skim through its vast sea of knowledge, of historical knowledge, and when it finds a compatible recipe, it's going to tell me how to make it. So it's got suggested recipe hot chocolate, then it has recipe steps for hot chocolate, it has suggested recipe uh, chocolate cake with coffee frosting, that actually sounds really good, um, and suggested recipe chocolate chip cookie. So I guess maybe we have the ingredients for that, or like most of them, or maybe it added some ingredients for this one. Um, yeah, see it added some flour, which is, you know, you, 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 might, you might be able to assume that people would have flour on hand, but uh, most of these recipes, I think, probably just use the ingredients that I included in the list, but it can, it can add ingredients to the, to the list. It's not perfect. Um, but if you run it a few times, you'll definitely get some generations that only use the ingredients that you put in. And you'll, you can get some really creative recipes this way. Um, I did one where I put in like really, really random ingredients and it came up with uh, some interesting recipe ideas. Um, and full disclaimer here, I am not a chef. So when I look at these recipes, like I don't know if this is a real good recipe for a chocolate cake with coffee frosting. Um, I just know, I mean, it, to me, it looks like it would work. Bake at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for 30, 35 minutes. That sounds like the amount of time and heat that you would bake a cake for, but I don't really know. I'm not like an expert cook or anything. Um, and the, the recipes are not super detailed, but that's because again, I'm not a chef. So the recipes that I built the framework on are not super detailed, but this is why I wanted to show you exactly how you can make your own one of these because uh, if you've got some really cool recipes or any kind of inputs that you want to make a framework with then you can make your own framework and if you put in more specific better recipes then your outputs are going to be more specific better recipes my outputs are fairly generic probably not very precise recipes because that's the kind of inputs that i use to create it because i don't have a whole bunch of good recipes offhand i just kind of wrote recipes for stuff that I know how to make off the top of my head. Anyways, that is uh, the recipe generator. Um, let's see, let's go back and I will share this with the community. Yes, share it. All right, so now the recipe generator has been shared. So if you wanna access this, all you have to do is come in here, um, 
go to open a document, click on frameworks. This will open, click on browse community frameworks. And then that little uh, window that you open right here, we'll see. And then you just need to search recipe. And here we have recipe generator. And so you'll have a little plus sign next to it where this unshare button is for me. And you can just add that to your dashboard. And then you'll be able to use the recipe generator to uh, you know, put in whatever you have in your cupboard, in your fridge, and it'll give you some suggestions for things that you can make, uh, hopefully delicious things. All right, uh, thanks for watching. I'll catch you in the next video and uh, enjoy the recipe generator.